Hello there! In today's video I'll show you how I made this M26 model from Trumpeter in 172 scale. I start out by cutting out the pieces from the sprue and cleaning them up from any residual plastic. For gluing the parts together I use extra thin glue Mr. Cement S. The kit uses link and length type tracks that may be a bit difficult for beginners to assemble. I fill each of the holes with Tamiya basic body and then sand them with a nail file. Well, it turns out that the tracks don't fit onto the drive sprockets. To fix this issue, I had to cut off a few sprocket teeth on the inner part of the wheel. I decided not to show how I assembled the rest of the track because it was a horrible experience and it wouldn't really be nice to watch, so let's just proceed to the next step. I removed the original plastic handles and drill out holes in which I will place new ones made out of copper wire after I apply the armor texture. Speaking of, I create cast steel texture on the turret and front plates by stippling on some Tamiya putty diluted with Mr. Cement S. And now I mount the handles in place. I made these headlight shields thinner as they were too thick in the kit. Alright, last modification before painting. I drill out the holes for the gunner's sight and coaxial machine gun in the gun mantlet. I now prime the tank with Mr. Surfacer 1000 to unify the model and create a better surface for upcoming paints. I decided to use the pre-shading method on this model. This means that I paint corners and deep crevices with glossy black paint. It will create an interesting looking paint job. It will also act as a safety measure because when I miss some spots with the base color, there will be black paint showing through instead of the grey primer.
For the base color I used a mix of Tamiya Kaki Drop and Yellow Green. The mixer ratio was about 60 to 40 percent I think, although it's just a rough estimate so don't take my word for it. To make the paint job even more interesting, I spray on some highlights with the base color with a couple drops of buff added to it. I then apply water slide decals after spraying a thin coat of gloss varnish under them. I also use some decal chemicals to make them conform to the surface better. After sealing the entire model with Tamiya semi gloss varnish I proceed to the next step and that is applying the pin wash. I use my own wash made out of the oil paint diluted with some enamel thinner. And now it's time for some shipping. I painted shipping in two layers on this model. First I apply paint that is basically just a lighter version of the base color and then I fill the chips with a dark rusty paint. I initially wanted to chip the model with the dark rust paint alone, but as it turned out the chips would be almost invisible on the pre-shaded surface. Thus I went with the two layer technique. It's good to apply some rust wash when you're painting the chips in two layers, as it will sort of tie the two paints together and create a more realistic looking effect.
On this model I opted for using homemade matte texture instead of a pre-made acrylic paste. I simply mix PVA glue, sawdust and some water together and then apply it on the tank. I paint the mud with an airbrush because the color doesn't look very good. If you want you can add some dry pigments to the mud mix and then you won't have to paint it. The matte is too uniform for my taste, thus I use some enamel products to give it a more visual texture. I polished some of the chips with a pencil to give them a nice polished steel look. I also grind down some of the graphite and apply it to the machine guns with a makeup brush. Oil stains and leaks are also a nice way to add more character to your model. This was actually my first time ever painting a tank in US olive drop and I enjoyed the process quite a lot. I honestly can't wait till I paint another tank in a similar paint job. But for now, that is all. 
I hope you enjoyed the video or maybe learned something from it. Anyways, thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.